can be high. Well, with us now is Hazel Blears, the former community secretary who oversaw much of the local prevent strategy between 2007 and 2009, and Nabil Ahmed, the president of the Federation of Student Islamic Societies, whose organization was specifically attacked by Theresa May today for not doing enough to tackle extremism. Um, Hazel Blears, where's the evidence that there is a problem on universities? Well, I think there is some evidence uh, that people who have got themselves involved in various um, extreme groups have actually been at university and have been exposed to sometimes very um, extremist atmospheres, extremist preachers. And I think it's a world away from that situation we've just seen on your screen here, uh, which is about appears to be about a genuine um, postgraduate research project. That's a world away from actually vulnerable students being on com campus and being exposed to some extremist events. It's about, a, um, it's about a climate of suspicion. No, I don't think it is. And I, and I do think that it's important to try and say that all of us have a responsibility to tackle extremism. It's not just universities, it's schools, it's local government, it's the whole range of agencies. So I don't think it's just about singling out universities. If there are uh, extremists around or people who are advocating violence, it is surely the legitimate concern of the state to keep an eye on them, isn't it? Uh, Let's start by, you know, looking at what the security experts are saying. Look at what the universities themselves are saying. Uh, the university's minister himself uh, said that you can't say that, you know, universities have been this radicalising force. So what do we do uh, about ideas on campus? Uh, we have a well-established British legal system. You can't incite hatred. You can't incite to violence. If somebody crosses that line of the law, I will be the first to suggest uh, they should be reported to the police. But universities have an incredibly important role in generating discussion and shaping our society. See. What's wrong with the already existing laws? Well, I think universities do have a role in generating debate and challenge and ideas. That's what they're there to do. But they also have an important role of trying to protect and safeguard very often vulnerable young people who find themselves perhaps away from home for the first time ever and are suddenly exposed to some pretty extremist stuff on campus. You will have seen it in your own experience and you'll know that it does sometimes cross the line. And therefore, all that's being said is universities, schools, local government offices, teachers, let's all be aware of the problems and let's try and make sure that our young people don't get drawn into this kind of life. Uh, it's pretty I, I, reasonable. I think these comments are actually quite worrying, if I may so, say so, Hazel. Uh, uh, it's, it's a difficult time, and, and you will know for the constituents, in your constituency, uh, rising levels of anti-Muslim hatred in society today. It's actually with that in mind that I was quite concerned by the comments made today by our Home Secretary. What we're really calling for and what we really think is needed is a proper and mature and responsible evidence-based discussion of the issue of extremism on campus. That's why we've actually invited her to sit down, properly sit with us, with Muslim students at our annual conference in a couple of weeks, and properly discuss this issue. It does sound a little bit close to creating some sort of potential offence of thought crime. Well, I don't think we should be in that territory at all. And what, well, what, I, what I was very keen to do... You're talking about pernicious yeah. influences to which people are exposed on university campuses. That is coming pretty close to saying there are some things they shouldn't be exposed to in terms of ideas. It's not just in terms of ideas. It's when you get people promoting a narrative that basically says the West is at war with Islam and it's people's responsibility to respond to that, sometimes in pretty violent and extreme ways. You Where's the evidence that. that leads to acts of violence? Well, you, you can see that some of the people who've been exposed to, to that kind of extremism have eventually got themselves involved in some pretty... Um, appalling activities. I'm not saying it's going to happen to everybody, but there are vulnerable young people. And you'll know that I sat down with young Muslims uh, when I was Secretary of State, and I, I would argue and challenge on some of the issues that they had real concerns about. But I was always concerned to try and make sure that some of those young people who could be drawn down that path had the protection and support of you, their authorities. I think that's so important. You must acknowledge the possibility of such a thing happening. Uh, extremism exists in society. That's not the question. The question is how we deal with it. Uh, I don't think that we should be viewing Muslim students or students generally with such suspicion. I think that's very counterproductive for our society and I think it unfairly demonises Muslim students 
as well, who, by the way, go about some wonderful work on campuses. And amidst allegations of extremism and suspicion and so forth, I really think that gets negated. I think, if I may say so, Jeremy... This isn't directed at all Muslim students. It's directed at small caucuses of people who advocate extreme views. That's entirely different. And 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 uh, extremism exists in society, and what do we do about that? I, we it's very like much saying that all we white people will it. feel persecuted because someone takes an initiative against them. The they BNP. Get, and, and, and for that reason, let us uphold freedom of expression in society and on our campuses so that radical views can get challenged. Let's not crack down on students or crack down on freedom of expression. This is a fundamental tenet of our society. Has something changed? Because when you were in government, this initiative uh, didn't really get going, did it? No, I, Something's I, happened. Well, I don't accept that because when I was Secretary of State, I set up, as, as you know, the Muslim Women's Advisory Group, the Young Muslims Group, all of that work has since Why been put to one Theresa side. May now? Because she has actually abolished, this government has abolished much of that work that happened. And this kind of work, you don't get results overnight. It takes a long time to build up capacity of women, of young people, to be able to challenge this ideology. And that was happening. You know, you can do all the rhetoric you like by singling out universities or whatever else. You need to but do the work. You were supporting her a minute ago. The, the principle's fine, but where's the resource and where's the backing? What we really need is an evidence-based discussion. I do feel... Uh, in our Home Secretary's comments today that uh, there was a little bit of sensationalism there and I do feel a little bit of sensationalism here. Look to the evidence, look at what's happening on campus, look at the great work but also look at what the security experts are saying. And you can't say uh, that radicalisation is widespread, you can't label uh, universities as being complacent in that regard. Uh, we really need a, a proper and mature okay. discussion. It was actually for that reason two months ago uh, that we actually held the first ever conference on the issue of campus extremism. We had government there right. prevent university leaders and what came out is that this discussion is very sensational. Let's have a responsible discussion right. maturely okay. with evidence. Good, we'll return to this. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Thank you. Well, now you think you know where that stuff you put into your computer is or the stuff